I got some explaining to do. And I am way past due of doing this video, but I'm gonna get to it. First of all, I had to gather myself today because Takeoff passed away. He was murdered, of course. My favorite Migo, let me tell you something. This was, I was supposed to do this video two days, two, three days ago. And my grandfather's birthday was yesterday. I ain't come on here and say nothing about that. Couldn't even honor my grandfather. When I tell you, when I tell you what is going on in my life right now, you would think you're watching Lifetime at 2 p.m. sipping tea. First of all, rest in peace, take off. I'm going to talk about take off a little later. I can't even do that right now. Can't even do it. I'm getting back into vlogging maybe the day or tomorrow. So I'll talk about it in my vlogs, but rest in peace, motherfucking take off. So, um, I know some of you may know that I've uh, had like a loss in my family, right? On October 13th, I lost my grandmother on my father's side. Mind you, on my father's side, before I even go into deep about her death, it's, it's her, him, us two. That's it. There was my great grandfather, but he married... German woman I believe she was white she was white so it's like we really didn't have a relationship with them we don't I probably only met that um side of my family maybe once or twice and we didn't speak like that so when he, when he passed away it was like that was over that was over with so that was it that was all that's I don't know anyone else on my dad's side of the family like that nobody so mind you also me and my sister haven't talked to my dad probably in like five years <clears throat> We haven't talked to the man because we had our own little scuffle with life, you know, a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of not understanding, and a lot of what the fuck, right? So, and I know y'all done seen bits and pieces. Some of y'all done seen my vlogs from back when, when I did the, um, where I let y'all listen to the song he apologized to me and my sister with, and where he's blaming me for everything, <laughs> but he's the dirty. That's how it was, and excuse me, I'm a little I had to gather myself to do this video. So give me a, give me, be patient with me. So what I always would say to myself is like, I don't want to reconnect with my dad again over my grandmother passing, right? So I'm like, okay, I would talk to my sister every now and again. I'm like, Shanti, you think we should talk to dad? She's like, eh. and I'm like, let's just try it. At least we know the nigga now. <laughs> we know what to do. Just don't let him move in. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> we figured out the, you know, the answer to the equation, you know? So, but, you know, it was just taking us a moment to really try to reconnect, right? So, we all done been up to see our, my grandmother in different times. Shantae would go one moment. My dad would be there. i will go every now and then. But I would say my dad is the, more, the most frequent because he lived with her a very, very, very long time. Very, very, very long time before he came, before he moved down to Georgia. So, it was just them two. It was like mom and son loving on each other. They only had all they had was each other. I told myself I did not want to cry. Now my grandmother did have a significant other. Her name was Cat. I've known Cat my entire life, and my my entire life it was Cat Mama, Cat Mama, Cat Mama. Um, but my grandmother never showed any type of affection or anything crazy like that to Cat. It took me to just grow up to realize. Y'all ain't friends. <laughs> like, y'all just ain't friends. <laughs> my grandmother never, never sat me down and was like, yes, I'm a lesbian. I'm interested in women. Because that's all I've ever, all I've seen is cat and mama, cat and mama. So, I just got older and just realized it. And I was just like, hey, cat. Hey, mama. Like, it was just like, it just clicked as I got older. She didn't have to really say anything. So, she lost cat in 2019. That's a lot. Cat was around since they was like teenagers, bro. Like I got, we found pictures. I'll get there. But they've been in each other's lives for a very, 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 very long time. So she lost Cat in 2019. Me and Cat got the same birthday. Um. So my grandmother's now in Jersey by herself. You know, and I know, I know it was sad. I know it was only. Um. And I always would be like concerned about what she's doing, but she's also been the type of woman that always got up and got her nails done, got her hair done, 
when I tell you church was her second home, baby, if she's not at home, she's doing something for the church. So she kept herself busy as well. But I know that sometimes I know she'll feel lonely. Her, her best friend, the love of her life has passed away. So years are passing, you know what I'm saying? Now, the relationship between me and my grandmother, or my me and my sister and my grandmother, wasn't bad, but I think when we moved from Jersey to Georgia, it kind of was a disconnect. We rarely talked to my grandmother like that. And well, and when we did, it was every once in a blue moon, but when we came up to Jersey, we would go visit. When we called, we called. When she called, she called. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like that, but it was very sparse. But we always would stay connected. When we all got together, it was like not, like I have childhood memories in her home. So, you know, getting to Jersey, I mean, moving to Georgia, you know, I kind of got used to not talking to her that much, but it was like, that's still my grandmother. It's just us for her. You know what I'm saying? So, <sighs> fast forward, it's 2022. Now, mind you, I think the last time I seen her was in 2020, you know, and then that's when COVID hit and all that. So you couldn't really travel to Jersey and Jersey was bad during that whole thing. So, you know. We couldn't really see her like that. But we would call and we would talk. There'd be moments she, I'll text her and call and she won't pick up. And then she'll call me days later. And I'm like, woman, listen. Listen, how you doing? Are you feeling how you feeling? You need us to come up there? I would always ask her that. Because I'm like, I know it has to be lonely to be up there by herself. Her son and her grandchildren are now in Georgia. So she would always like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. Um... She would always, you know, at least play strong. So, shit. <laughs> so October 14th, fast forward now. And I, no, no matter of fact, let me not fast forward it yet. I remember like on the 12th or 11th of October, I seen her, uh, her Facebook where she tagged First Hopewell Baptist Church. That's like her, that's the church there. That's. That's her church home. When I tell you that church has been around since before I was born, like my dad and my mom used to go to that church, like first hope well. Boy, oh boy, that is the church, right? So she just tagged them. And I'm like, my grandmother's so old. Look at her, just tagging churches. <laughs> and I was like, I need to call her. And I didn't call her within that moment. October 14th, like three in the morning, my sister come banging on my door. No, five in the morning, she come banging on my door. My dad sent us a message on Messenger saying that, you know, your grandmother passed away. And supposedly she's married to this man. And he is the one that told my dad. So I'm assuming she died October 13th, October 14th. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I still don't know to this day. My sister banging on my door. She op I open the door. She's like, Mama died. Da, da, da. And I'm like... Mama died, and she got a husband, and blah, blah, blah. We like, husband? <laughs> like, not the lesbian, not my lesbian grandmother. That doesn't make any sense, right? So my mother helped us out, as always, and bought us uh, plane tickets to get up there. My dad bought his, right? He's like, he's leaving to go. And this is how we're reconnecting with my dad. We haven't talked to him in, like, five years. So it was my fear happened. I did not. I did not want to cry. I thought I'd be able to tell this story, y'all. It's been, it's November 1st, y'all. Me and my sister's a wreck. Because we like, husband, what the fuck? Mama died, how? 76, always up and running, kept her nails done, kept her hair done. The only thing I ever heard of anything sickness from her was her back. But my grandmother was always secretive. No one really knew that Kat was more than what she was, than just a sister or a friend. No one, she kept her business very private. And that's that baby boomer generation. They didn't really, I think that's the right generation. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I am. Right, but you know, she was 76. And um, they're very private when they're, when they're doing something outside of what society thinks or, thinks or the church and stuff like that. So she was very private about shit like that. But to find out about a random husband was weird. So my dad gets there. We both get, we get there Saturday. We get there Saturday, um, which I think was the 15th. And I'm going to try to keep people's names out of this besides me, my dad, and my sister and my mother. But the Negro, that's her husband, 
said that he wanted to meet my dad at the house or whatever to, you know, talk with him about it. Okay, cool. So, but I wanted to be there with him because it's like, who is this nigga? Mind you, I don't talk to this nigga several times already. I think, no, 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 no. I didn't, nope, I haven't talked to him yet. Haven't talked to him yet. We get, we get to, um, but he's talked to my dad several times. We get to Jersey. My sister left her bag, one of her, her carry-on bag on the flight. Mind you, the whole TSA was, you know, in Atlanta was crazy. My sister didn't check her bag because she felt like she was um, pressured not to. And she had a big ass thing in my mother's shea butter. So she had to, she lost that. Um, and you know, the Atlanta TSA is the most disrespectful fucking TSA. Nigga was like, <laughs> I'm gonna use some of it and throw it away. The, like he was just so petty about it. I fucking hate the Atlanta TSA with all of my life. That's why I just be trying to go through and not have to speak to many people. So she's already frustrated and sad because she, now she lost some a <laughs> big ass thing of shea butter she didn't even use yet. So we get on the flight, we get to Jersey. Shanti, I, we, me and my sister got complete, two completely different seats. I'm sitting in between two dudes with bad breath. She's sitting in between two girls and she finds a friend in them. All I hear is her laughing while I'm sitting in hot, fuming winds. But anyway, I done cried several times on this flight. Get off the flight. Shanti left her bag on the flight. So I had to wait. Where, my mother didn't want me to leave her. So she, I had to wait with her to, um, to get to finally have them get her bag <sighs> my dad goes to the house because at first he was trying to look for us he could not find us mind you this is first time flying okay i didn't realize that until this moment right here when he couldn't find us um so he goes ahead and i was like go ahead and head to the house i'm gonna stay here with shanti but, but part of me was like nah i want to see this nigga i want to see this husband my dad gets there and plus i'm also nervous about what my dad's gonna do this is his first time hearing about this husband too so it's like when he get there and, and like walk into his mother home and see this man that he's never known, never met in, at all. So, did I talk to this man beforehand? I think I did. But I was trying to be cool and calm because he kept saying my condolences and he was like, I'm going to see George. I did speak with him. I lost my wife saying stuff like that. He's, I could tell by the accent that this nigga was not from the U.S. of A., okay? So my dad's telling me he's like 40-something. So I'm already pissed at the age difference. 40-something to 76-year-old woman, I'm already pissed, right? So I'm like, this that's weird. I'm like, did my grandmother just set herself up with some damn green car marriage? What the hell is going on? Who is this nigga, right? My dad gets there. And my grandmother has a nickname for my dad. She's the only one that calls him that. If you, like, you have to really know him to call him that name because he don't even like it when she do it. So... Um, my dad's in the house look you know just trying to get his brain together because he just got in because my dad always has the key to my grandmother's house and um, this nigga just walks in and he's calling him by his nickname so at this point this dude is trying to get murdered he's trying to He's trying to antagonize my dad after just losing his mama. We don't know who you are. And you just walking into his mother's home that my mother's had, my grandmother's had his house since 1994, since I was four years old. So basically they had their whole little thing when my dad was like, bro, give me some time. My dad was like, just like, give me a moment. Give me a moment. So he leaves. He drops off my grandmother's purse and her phone. Okay. We could not get into the phone. The phone was locked. But obviously he can get into it because he was calling us from her phone. I, we, I didn't have a number to contact him from. I was talking to him through my grandmother's cell phone. So we get there. We finally get there. And at this point, we're all laughing to keep from crying because we like, what is going on? So we made my sister get there. My dad is just like overwhelmed a little bit. Like this nigga real life called me my nickname. Like I know him. Like, he's like, and my dad, my dad is a tiny gangster nigga. Let me tell you, he, he's very small. He's like 5'3", <laughs> but he's been small his whole life. So tall, be, you being tall over him does nothing to him. Like, he'll, he'll, he's going to beat thine ass, whether you're tall, short, medium, small, shme, like, it doesn't matter. Okay, so he's a little shaken up by it because we're all just not even understanding, right? We trying to set up stuff to get her buried. And get her funeral going because you know and then we also have to get this house together 
because she got living plants in here. She has fish in here. She has a garden in the back. Like, you know how old people are. They keep and hold on to everything. So we got a basement, a middle floor, and a top floor that we got to go through and organize and get out of here, get, get rid of the stuff that she really didn't need. So that's basically what we was there to start doing while still trying to set up for her for her funeral while still trying to figure out who this nigga is. He's calling and it's like starting to get become uncomfortable situation. He actually gave my dad the marriage marriage license. And to me, it looked false and weird as hell. It didn't look professional. There was no seal on it. But of course, I think it was a copy. But it looked weird. Man, I looked at that motherfucking marriage license. This nigga was born a month before me. You've guessed it, America. He's 33 fucking years old. And he's from Kenya and he's a fucking immigrant. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This nigga started to antagonize us on a level to where you have to be evil as hell to... In my mind, murder someone because we don't know you. We don't know you. And I'm explaining why I feel like he did. At first, I didn't think like I didn't feel this way. Now I feel like this way, feel this way. He said he's been in her life for the past three years. They married a year ago. Okay. They married March 28th of 2021. In my memory bank, I slick have a moment where I feel like my grandmother told me about this man. She was like, yeah, I got my friend so-and-so here. He helps me out from time to time. For some reason, my memory is telling me we had this conversation. But for some reason, I'm not able to fully solidify that we had that conversation. But for some reason, I feel like you do. And I was like, okay, cool. Okay, you got a little company. I was like, it's your boyfriend? Better not be no boyfriend. I don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, no, no, he just helps me around the house. For some reason, I remember having that conversation. Okay, so fast forward. He's been in her life for the past three years. Every time we come into town, he's not there. He told us this. He was like, Eloise didn't like me to be there when y'all came in town, so I would always leave. I'm like, okay. All right, that would have to make sense in his world and ours because he wasn't there when we came into town. So that was still weird to me. I'm like, my grandmother can't be, couldn't have been this lonely. I, I'm When I tell you we... We'll call her all the time, like, listen, you need us to come up there if you feel some type of way, let us know. We can't just uplift our lives and be there. But at the same time, I want we what did want her to call us and be like, listen, and when we and when and when we talk to us, tell us the truth of what how you feeling. It breaks my heart to fit to that. I feel like she was alone and felt some type of way about it and didn't think she could talk to us about it. So it break my it broke my heart with that fact. That was like my main like sadness for in the beginning of all this. Like, damn, my grandmother was really sad. So this nigga, mind you, we we he, we find out on the fourteenth, basically, fly out on the fifteenth. So this nigga has her purse, her house, her car for about a day, a day and a half, maybe. So we go through her wallet, no ID. When he gave my dad the purse, no ID. No birth certificate, no social security card. When I tell you we could not find those three things or no keys for the house. My dad already had his own key. So we knew this man had the keys to the house and that information. This 33-year-old immigrant married my 76-year-old grandmother. And I'm pretty sure she was doing that as a help my friend thing out. It had to be. Couldn't, be no couldn't have been nothing else. Because when we came back to the house, it was like... It looked exactly what I remember it looking. Like, nothing out of place, nothing in a different spot, nothing showing that there's a new person living here, nothing. Even Kat's room was exactly the same. Like, it was it was like no one lived there. There was a kid room, my grandmother's room, and Kat's room. And then the whole bathroom she had redone. I, rem I remember when she got her bathroom redone. That was cool. But anyway, he, he I'm like, so no sign of no husband, no nothing. So... We looking around now. We're finding mail from him for him, but let me tell you, this is that mail that we all throw away. The like the Walmart credit cards, the bank credits, like you've been approved type things. That's all the only mail we're seeing from this man. So I'm like, mm, we know what you're trying to do there, and and she wasn't allowing you to get out the mail outside of that because we didn't see anything else. So 
they got this dope ass shredder, which I wish I would have got the information for it. So I'm just starting to go through her paperwork and shred things that's not really necessary and, and hold on to things that are. Because we have to handle the business for her home as well because she's not going to be here to handle it. So any bills she has or anything that she's been paying on, we need to be calling these people and letting them know. Mind you, we try to get her body from the hospital. We go up there. We're unable to do anything because we are not the next of kin on the paperwork. Her husband is. Like I said, it's November 1st. And I'm going to just say she still is not buried. Okay? So, we trying to reach out to this nigga. Because I, cause I slick already had let him know, like, I don't believe you're married to my grandmother. This seems weird. This is green cardy-ish. Because he's like, it didn't even make sense to us. That at 75, my grandmother was like, you the one and a 33 a man that's the same age as me no i'm gonna be right back somebody calling me all right my bad so it was just hard for me to fucking believe so we already let him know he was like how you gonna tell me love doesn't i don't want to hear that from your 33 year old kenyan ass shut the fuck up with that whole love thing y'all ain't love each other because ain't nothing in here shows she loved you but there's pictures of me my dad and my sister all through this motherfucker so what are you talking about he tried to throw some stuff in our face saying how we're never there. I was like, nigga, you came around with during COVID, nigga. And you even said when we came in town, you used to dip. So you know who we are. When I tell you he was antagonizing us so bad. So we're staying at my grandma's house because it only makes sense. <laughs> Where else will we be staying? Like, come on now. So we're talking, people calling the house because this man that went through her phone and was calling people, letting them know that she's passed, right? So people are calling the house phone. We're picking it up because we're there now. Um, and they're like, what's going on with Eloise? We're letting them know what's going on. They're shocked. They don't know who this man is. We're, we're telling them. We're giving them this man's name. They don't know who he is. Um, it was getting real weird out here. Okay. Now, there's food in the fridge. There's food in weird places. I'm like, why would my mom put food here? That doesn't make any sense. Right, so there is some weird things going on, but we're like, what's what is this? Last time I came to see her, she did have a lot of expired things. I told her she has got to stop keeping all these expired things. One thing I would need to tell America: check on your elderly and go clean their house out because they will hold on to stuff for for decades. So it was no different coming in this this time. It was like still the fridge smelled horrible. So, um, we didn't know what was in the fridge that was making it smell bad. Like there, like we look into the seasoning cabinet. There's like no like garlic powder, bait, like no onion powder, no paprika. It's all like dill, tarragon, like all Caribbean, African ass flavors, right? So I'm like, what this nigga in here cooking? Oh no. Oh no. Right? So we can't get her body out. We try to go. I was like, this is her son. He's on her will. He's the power of her attorney. He's the power of attorney. He's all that. You trying to tell us we can, he can't bury his mother? So we're going through leaps and bounds, right? So my mother ended up just coming on up, coming on up to Jersey to help us out with everything, right? She decided on her own to come help us out. She comes up and we're just, we're going everywhere. We're going to vital statistics. We're trying to get birth certificates sent out because we can't find our birth certificates. So we're going, we're going deep into things. We're going through paper. I'm going, and me personally, I'm going through papers and papers and papers, really reading them, making sure I'm keeping all the paperwork, papers with cats information, all the paperwork with Eloise because they did everything else together. Like I'm trying to be as precise as I can with all the information and make sure I'm keeping everything and making sure I'm keeping, finding out everything she's paying for so, mind you, no ID, no birth certificate, no social security card, can't find it. So, and her keys to the house are gone. So, I'm using her card as there because, you know, we have to get around and get things done. So, I'm we're putting gas in it. We're finding out things about the car. We're doing everything we need to do. But we're pissed because of the... Well, we're looking at the neighbor's house and we find out that this dude used to stay in the house next door to my grandmother before living with her if he ever did another thing before we even got there my god brother was driving around checking out the house or whatever and he was saying like all the blinds are open and all the lights are on at night and also my little sister alika hey boo um her, her mother would you know drive past you know her mother's um 
I don't know. She just ain't into the foo, the foo foo shit. <laughs> as far as I know, I don't really know her mother like that. But you know, she's very like not into the whole spirit spirit thing. It's not. It's, it correct me, family, if I'm wrong. Just shoot me a text. Let me know. But um, so she would come by and check. You know, from time to time. So it's like, why do you have the windows on and all the lights on all day, all night? So. You know, once we got there, we closing things up. You know, she always used natural light to light her house up anyway. So we'll do, do what she do. Cut, close them at night, open them during the day. Taking care of the fish, doing that. Trying to figure out what we're going to do about these plants in this garden. You know, we're really trying to figure this out while still not being able to bury her. We couldn't get no type of information that we was trying to get to get her buried. Because everything needs a death certificate. And as long as her body is sitting in that morgue, We'll never get the death certificate. We wanted to get a, um, what is it called? So I've been saying it this whole time. Why did I, f it literally just ran out of my brain. Shanti! Couldn't, why, y'all know what I'm trying to say. Well, we need a medical examiner. Why is the word just leaving my fucking, but we couldn't get it. I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna fucking link it, put the word here. Why can't I think of the word? We couldn't get autopsy. Oh my God, guys. So that was our main thing, getting the autopsy done and getting her buried. Because at this point, you done did something to my motherfucking grandmother, okay? So we can't get no autopsy because he has to sign her body out of this hospital. One thing that I've learned about the state of New Jersey, they honor and protect these immigrants more than they honor and protect these families and Americans that were born and raised in these states. When I tell you, the way the world works is ridiculous. Um, so we're in the house. We're we're sad as hell, right? We we're happy, sad, glad, mad. We're re trying to re we're re reconnecting with one another while still going through this very traumatic moment, and going through things, finding things in a home that we never knew was there. Because when I tell you, shit, blah, 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 shit sits in the same spot all the time and you don't really touch it, right? We found we found this, we knew that this chest was here because there was always plants on top of it. So when we moved all the plants off of it, we finally got to open up the chest and it's just filled with tiny records. There was an A-track, um, A-track machine joint in there. Like, it was just like, whoa, I didn't even, I've never knew this was even in here. We've always seen this chest. We've never opened it. We go through her little cabinet, glass cabinet thing. There's a whole bunch of records, like crazy records. Jackson 5, Anita Baker, um, uh, Diana Ross, Aretha Franklin. Like, it was just dope. Really diving into my grandmother's things and really seeing what she's had. She was a very elegant, very very just oh type of woman i found these old school cameras that would have been dope to have because it was just like that would be dope to try to see if i could take pictures on those didn't even know she had those and these and i'm pretty sure these are cats and my grandmother's belongings but when i tell you like cat was my dang on grandmother too like when i tell you cat loved us like with all of her heart so we're we're trying to deal with all this while still getting her stuff in order and trying to plan out how to start taking things out of the home. Because at this point, we're like, sell the house, right? That's what we at. I don't want to, though. My spirit's like, I don't want to sell the house. This is our my childhood home. You know, it was, you know, cat's room, my grandma's room, and the kid's room. They, did, they, I, they even had separate bedrooms. This man told, we've had, we have so many different ways of how she died come from this man. At first, she was throwing up real bad. And, um... And she had diarrhea real bad. And, you know, he had to take her to the hospital and she couldn't breathe. And another moment he told us. It was the it's the craziest thing, man. The craziest thing. The one of these days, he, um, the neighbor, because we found some of his stuff in the basement, which was the only thing that looked like something of his, was this couple of bags, like three bags of stuff. We took it outside and left it there. Because at this point, we're so heartbroken. Like, this man just swooped his way into my grandmother's life and took advantage of her and prayed on her and kept it going and did what they felt like they needed to do. So while we're there, we're getting crazy evil eyes from the neighbor on the left of the house. And no real response from the right, which was crazy because my dad knows the dude in the house to the right. 
So when we, when we, it, when the dude left, my dad was like, give me time. I guess he went to the neighbor on the right. So he comes over, the, the, the guy that my dad knows. He comes over and he's like, man, this, that, and the third. And he literally tells us that it was a green card marriage. It was like a chauffeur, but a chef, a chauffeur, butler type of relationship. He was helping her out. And he tells us that he used to live with him. And he's blaming her death on all the COVID vaccines she got. He immediately goes to, I've been telling her not to get da 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 da. Mind you, Howard looks probably like he's the same age as my dad. So he's also another young one to me. I've been telling her not to do this and she got her booster too and blah, 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 and da, 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 da. He's putting it all on COVID, right? And I'm like, all right. I didn't want her to get it either, but I can't stop her at the same time. So I don't believe it's because of that. But for him to say that it was, um, that she was going to the bathroom on herself and throwing up all, there was no evidence of any type of mess like that. No evidence any type of mess like that we all know how older people houses smell if some, if there's some poop or piss in the air we know how that smell is never my grandmother's house has never smelled like that ever and it still didn't when we came to visit you would think at how at how he explained it there should be some dirty sheets there should be some dirty clothes there should be some type of mess somewhere nothing my dad slept in cat's room i slept in my grandmother's room my sister slept in the kids room so me being in my grandmother's room was very nerve wracking for me. But, you know, I had to buckle it on up and start going through things one by one and really throwing away the things she didn't have to keep for thousands of years. So, but that was just emotional going through all that stuff and finding certain things. Now I did find another version of the marriage certificate in the drawer in her nightstand, which was so ironic. like. Like, this nigga was in here trying to figure out how to plot to get this house and everything while we was trying to come down. Now, he didn't even know me and my sister was coming before, but he just knew my dad was coming. So, me and my sister coming was another bomb dropped on him. So, fast forward after being denied over and over and over and over again for every little thing we're trying to do for her. We can't even get the funeral home to come get her because she has to be released by this nigga. So... It's going on two or three days in and we... Get a knock. He said he was going to come over because he, my grandmother had a best friend who was like her second mom. And she hung out with her probably around the 11th or 12th. And they went and chilled together and hung out. So she was also very shocked at my grandmother's passing. She was very sad about that. She was best friends with my grandmother's mom. Um, mom. Yeah. Uh, her, she was, she actually turned 95 while we was there, you know, and so, you know, she was an older lady, but that was like her second mom. And she was even, she didn't know who this man was either. He only felt comfortable talking to us through her. Because he just felt like my dad was dangerous and would harm him in some way, shape, or form. Which he would have every right to. We set up a time for him to meet with my dad at her house or at our house. And she was going to come over, whatever the case may be. Mind you, she don't need to be going, running around like that at 95. No, nah, she... Who are you to even come to her house? But he was like, he'll talk on the phone. He ended up coming to the house around 10 p.m. with the cops to be escorted around. Just to be escorted around the house. So we're thinking this is a, this is his opportunity to grab things of value, things that, you know, mean something to him, blah, 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 right? He comes in with a mask on, so I'm like, all right, cool. You may, you know, we, you know what it is. <laughs> so he starts looking around the house. Mind you, he's looking around. Like, we are stealing things. So he's looking around the house. He looks all, he goes to the basement, does his thing in the basement, blah, blah, blah. I'm upstairs in the bathtub. So I hear the bang on the door. I get out the tub. I come down, I come down the steps with a towel on. Because <laughs> at this point, I'm on go. So I see it's the cops and stuff. And, you know, my sister's like, go put on some clothes. I was like, girl, get out of here. So I go run upstairs, put on some clothes, come back back downstairs. He was like, um, he kept telling the cops, I just need to look around. I just need to look around and make sure, blah, 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 blah. And they, they was like, okay. So he walks around. This nigga grabs absolutely nothing from downstairs in the basement, absolutely nothing from the living room. He comes upstairs. Now, I'm back upstairs before he gets upstairs. Watching this man go through Cat's room. And it's so weird because we've already went through all the drawers in Cat's room. So it was interesting to see 
what he chose to take pictures of. Because what he chose to take pictures of was Kat's family and her little trinkets on her deck, on her um, dresser. He opened up a drawer that had a pair of pants, took a picture of them. I'm like, all right, this nigga's crazy. So he goes to my grandmother's room. Mind you, the house is a little disheveled because we're going through each thing. We're all taking different sections of the house and going through it. So it does look a little messy, right? But you know, we're trying to keep it as clean as we can. This man was like, oh, such a mess. Like he takes a full picture of my grandmother's full room, right? And I'm looking at this man like, you see anything that belongs to you? He didn't say anything. And me knowing, me knowing my grandmother's room, the room is no different. There's no signs of any man living in this room at all. He goes into the kid's room. He opens up the drawers, dresser drawers, take a picture of that whole room. I'm like, now you took a picture of my sister's laptop bag. The room was a mess because my sister's sleeping in it, but you took a picture of that. It's like, what are you trying to prove there? It's so messy in here. You don't know what's in here. Okay. So what did you, what are you looking for? So he goes back downstairs, nigga ain't grab nothing. He goes to the hall. Now the cops, my sister was downstairs talking to the cops. And by this time they're irritated because he's, my dad went outside at this point. My dad was upstairs with me when he was walking upstairs and I had to stop my dad. When I tell you my dad was following that man like this, I had to stop him because I feel like something was about to go crazy. So I grab him. He, he go downstairs. My dad ended up going outside. This nigga comes downstairs. He's like, I need to speak to judge. And the cop was like, he's outside. Go talk to him. He was like, I need to go check the garage real quick. I need to, can I, and, he, and the cops was irritated at, at this point. He was like, listen, we're not here to sit here while you go through the whole house and not grab anything. No, you can't go to the, basically tell him no. And so he was like, well, I need to speak, I need to speak to my stepson. Didn't I, he said that. He said, I need to speak to my stepson, my nigga. This nigga is my age calling my dad his stepson. And my dad has no clue who this nigga is. So at this point, every like we're, ugh. so we start to go outside. We start walking outside and there's a closet within the front door, closet area, another door to go outside. So um, there's a closet that he opens up the closet. Mind you, the, the light's not on though. So he opens up the closet while it's dark. So I'm like, you want me to cut on the light? He didn't say nothing. He just walked out. You didn't, you've got a police escort to walk around and take pictures of shit you've never seen. I don't even think he's ever been upstairs to my in my grandmother's house. So we're outside talking to the cops at this point. Cause my dad's shaking. He's trying to talk to my dad like face to face. I'm standing in between them. Cause I'm like, no, nah, you're not about to play. Cause the domestic violence or violence laws in Jersey is no game. If my dad was to place hands on this man, he would go to jail and not get out. There will be no bail. There'll be none of that. So it was so fucked up how everything, how he's antagonizing us. He looked at the cop's chest and he's like, is your camera on? And he, the cop was like, yeah. He was like, if anything happened to me past this point, George is responsible. And they was like, so you trying to say like, he's responsible for your funeral arrangements? <laughs> so everybody started laughing. Like, what are you talking about? He was like, no, if any harm comes to me, it's George's fault. And they was like, you can't do that. You can't accuse this man of that. And that's what I'm saying. He was antagonizing us on a whole nother level. And we, that was our first time physically seeing that man. So that whole thing happened, right? That whole thing happened. We're calling up to the hospital every day. Like, did he release the body? Did he release the body? Did he release the body? So we can get things started. We literally went everywhere in Jersey trying to get around the fact that he's the husband, in his words. To get my fucking grandmother buried. Nothing's working. Everything is need a death certificate. He got to release the body. Need a death certificate. He got to release the body. Need a death certificate. He got to release the body. He just won't do it. So it's going on a week. No, it's going on like four or five days now, maybe the sixth day. Six or seventh day. My mother takes my sister just to get her out the house because we're, we're an emotional wreck. He done call. He keeps calling my dad. He, he, he's antagonizing us, but won't. Um, won't release the body. He keeps calling us. Keep calling. Like, just pressing the bear, right? Poking the bear. At this point, we're starting to, you know, deal with the fact that we're going to have to take other avenues to get this done because he's not going to release her body. And we're just upset because how long does her body have to sit on ice before it starts to really fuck up? We haven't even gotten a chance to see her, identify the body, none of that. 
We can't do nothing because we're not next of kin, even though we're her re blood relatives. So this particular day, I was like, Shanti, go with that. Because we was all going to go. Me and my Shanti was going to go and go with my mother to my own poopoo house, which is my grandfather's sister on my mother's side. I've never been. She lives in New York. I've always wanted to go. Her house is beautiful, but I've never been yet. Been yet. And um, But I was like, something told me to stay with my dad at the house. So I stayed at my dad at the house. At this point, we done figured out we got to pack stuff up. So we go to Home Depot. We buy boxes. We buy, you know, bubble wrap, tape. And we're just trying to figure out how to divvy up the house and what to pack together. And I'm like, okay, I, we filled up the car. And mind you, this is a Cadillac push to start smart car, okay? So we filled that car up. And we was like, we're going to have to take a couple of trips from Jersey to Georgia. We're going to sell the house. Blah, 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 boom, boom, boom. As I wrap. As I start to get her crystal ottoman thing together, Shanti's already gone with my mother. My dad's upstairs. I'm downstairs. All I hear is a woman walk through the door. Hello? Is George here? So I get up. They just walk right in. The doors are locked. It's the cops again. Another female and male duo. Mind you, with the first set of cops, he was like, they kicked me out. We was like, we never kicked them out, which we really did. My dad was like, just give us some time. But if you feel comfortable staying in this house with us, feel free. The second round of cops, now they're kicking us out. Now we gotta go. We like, we gotta go. Out of my grand out of his mother's house, out of my grandmother's house, we gotta go. Because the husband said so. When I tell you just put a sour, I don't I already don't like Africans. I don't care what any of you say. I don't fuck with Africans, period. I don't give a fuck what. Which fucking little country? I don't give a fuck which one you from. Nigerian, Ethiopian, Kenyan. I don't give a fuck. I don't fuck with Africans. They're the most disrespectful fucking people ever. And this is prior to me going through all this shit with my grandmother. Fight me in the comments, nigga. I don't give a fuck. I don't fuck with Africans. Go back to Africa, bitch. I'd rather not. How about that? I guess they, they chose the right ancestry to bring the fuck over here. Because I, no. Nah. Not fucking with them. So this is like boiling my blood how conniving and evil this nigga is. Mind you, the neighbor to the left of the house is just giving us weird looks. And he used to speak to my dad. He used to speak. My dad was like, why isn't he speaking? So the cops come in. Basically, they was like, we got we to gotta move out. We got we to gotta, we gotta leave. We, we haven't even buried it yet. Don't have, don't have nowhere to go. Just started packing shit up. Just shit everywhere. When I tell you, we was taking pictures off the wall. We was putting her figurines together to put them in the same box. Like we was organizing the house together, so the house is, oh, the house is in a fucking array, like of mess. So, and beautiful items because she had some great items. I found a whole gold set of fucking silverware that she had. I'm like, well, damn, Eloise, you was in here living your best life. You and Cat was doing it up. He's outside, and we are talking to the cops we breaking it down we was like we gotta get out we gotta go that's crazy we don't know who this man is we keep telling them we don't know who he is no one in her life knows who he is but because he's the husband and he has maybe her birth certificate social security card all that and the marriage license or whatever and maybe one doc document saying with the address one thing about the cops i don't understand and that's in atlanta and jersey because this is i've only experienced these two states why don't you actually try to get the evidence that these people say that they have? Like when people are telling the truth, you don't believe them. When people are lying, you just accept what they're saying. This puts such a sour taste in my mouth about the state of New Jersey that I can't move there anymore. It changed everything. It changed everything. I was supposed to go up there, move in with my best friend, go visit my grandmother, have a good old time, and to see how the police work how the laws in Jersey work, it's not, it's, I don't suggest anyone that wants to keep their family together to move there at all. New York, New Jersey, leave it with the fucking foreigners and get the fuck out of there. Like, get the, leave, let them have that shit and move the fuck on. Because when I tell you, it's so fucking sad. So fucking sad. So we basically had to, I had to quickly pack all my stuff and we had to leave and Shanti's not here. So I have to figure out what's hers to pack. I don't know what she really packed. So I, as I'm pack, quickly packing up my stuff or whatever, 
I'm like grabbing small stuff as memorabilia. Because at this point, we've lost everything. At this point, we've lost all of our childhood memories. It's, it's dead at this point. So I grab a box. I put a picture of me, my great-grandfather, and my great-grandmother. Um, and I think a picture of my grandmother as well. In the box, I start throwing my toiletries in it. So I'm like, you know, this is my way of trying to grab some keepsakes and have my toiletries in it. So he's like, no, no. He comes upstairs. He's watching us pack up stuff. And he's like, they only came with their clothes. My nigga. This nigga straight up said they only came with our clothes. Every picture, every room in this house has a picture of us. Every figurine has a memory. I've seen everything in this house. You don't know shit about this house. You don't know shit. She had this big ass retirement picture she had. And I'm like, can we take that? But he's like, no, you can't take nothing. He kept pictures of us and wouldn't allow us to take pictures of us. I'm upstairs by myself, rent, like racking up what I could. When I tell you racking up what I could, taking pictures of my grandmother, taking pictures of Cat. Cat loved elephants. So I'm like, I wanted every all the elephant figurines because I'm starting to fall in love with elephants. So I grabbed one wooden elephant. I felt like I was trying to gather my whole childhood in like a minute. He came upstairs and was like, before we started packing, and the cops see the room, Cat's room. And they was like, it looked like someone else lived here. I was like, yeah, that was Cat's room. That was my mother's like partner, my grandmother's partner. He grabs her phone and he's like, it's my wife's phone. And he put it in his pocket because we wasn't, of course, it, this is abrupt. So everything's out. And he said, this is my wife's sister's room. I said, did you just say Cat was her sister? He ain't say nothing. I was like, that was her fucking partner the love of her life's room so it wasn't her fucking sister and that's how much she did not give a fuck about you because she didn't even think to tell you that she told everybody that that the the non-truth of cat being her sister but you don't know shit you came along after cat passed so you have no clue who this woman even is so i'm grabbing stuff bro when i tell you i grabbed as much as i could i'm packing up my sister stuff and I don't even know what to grab of hers in here because the stuff is all over the place. So I'm trying to pack up as much as I can of hers, grab her laptop, grab all the stuff that, you know, our shit that we actually bought. I left all, we left all the boxes. Um, we, he wouldn't let us take nothing of my grandmother. Um, but I was able to sneak some stuff in my, in my, um, sneak some paperwork, uh, some pictures and just some memorabilia of, of us in my suitcase and in my sister's bag. And I, got, I took some pictures of my dad and some pi pictures of me and my sister when we were super babies, like out the puss. Like, I got those pictures. And that's all I could do, bro. But in that box of my toiletries, right, I handed that off to my dad. Like, fuck him. Take this downstairs. They stopped him at the door, and which means that left all my toiletry stuff in that box with it. And I didn't realize that until we was already out the house. So I lost, like, all my pads, my face stuff. I just got that, you know, that cream, that cookies and clean um, face mask. All that was gone. My shea butter is now gone. So now me and my sister both losing shea butter. My face, my scrubby brush thing that I use to uh, clean my face, that's gone because that's all still inside the house, right? Mind you that we put all the plants outside because to us, it was like, we're not going to be able to take care of them at that moment. So we put all the plants outside to allow them to do what they're going to do outside, whether they're going to die or live, right? As we're putting the... the, um, the um, plants outside we looked behind a bush in my grandmother's front yard there was a dead cat behind her fucking bush like we was like my god crazy and it didn't look like the cat was like a malnourished or skinny it looked like the cat was like drained of blood and i'm like this is what these niggas on the street was doing to my grandmother. <laughs> like, never. Never. So we're kicked out. My mother gets us a hotel. We go to the hotel. And it's another reset of trauma. Because once again, guys, 
he has not released the body yet now we're kicked out of my grandmother's house we can't even we still haven't gotten her buried we've been here in and out when i tell you we're in and out of our bad moments in and out of it everybody's brain is running everybody's mind is all over the place me my dad and my sister was really going through it this was not how she was supposed to go for sure she had another 20 15 to 20 years and i swear she did so we're at the hotel literally depressed but we you know we're just always funny as a whole it was like we when we got back together it was like back to back to what we're doing and we had to realize we had to get some big dogs involved and we're gonna have to overstep some shit like everybody hearing the story feels bad for us the first set of cops the world's so small that the dude that was there is my god brother's cousin like who knew so you on my god brother's cousin camera talking about if anything happened to me is george's fault the second round of cops felt bad for us to the point where they gave us a ride they was like i we just had there's nothing we can do they have no like it's just so sad and when i tried they said we can get a police escort because my whole thing is i was gonna get a police escort to go back to the house to get the stuff that i forgot not to grab anything else to get the stuff i forgot it got to the point where the cops was being called so much mind you they weren't being called that much for us he was calling the cops so much about us being there that when i called like can i please get a police escort the lady said is this for 418 blase blase blah i said yeah she was like we're unable to and they stopped helping us they stopped helping us but everybody felt bad for us the hospital felt bad they're to the point now where they're like we'll call you when he finally released the body because i think this nigga thinks we're about to sit down as a big happy family and plan out her funeral and it's fucked up for him to even think that after doing what you've done to her for her to her son and grandchildren to to allow yourself to be in a house with pictures of people that you've wronged it's very interesting and very like you're you're a fucking psychopath bro and they've only been married a year so at this point you're not getting your fucking green card so there's we've realized um the hospital told us there is an over amount of, after a certain amount of days or a certain amount of time, the state will take over her body and blah, blah, blah. And from there, you know, we can do it. So at this point, we're either waiting for him to release the body or for the state to take over. But it's taking some time. But it's sad how long she's sitting there. She should have been put to rest a long time ago. Long time ago. We could, we really don't even know how she died or when she fully died. We really don't even know and have any answers to this day. None. None. And it's like, it's heartbreaking. She didn't deserve that or that way to go. And I wish we would have checked on her more. And I wish she was more vocal about how she felt more. Because either she was being super nice to this man and was like, listen, you've been helping me out. At least I can help you do this and get you a green card. And he took advantage to the point when she passed. He thought he can literally take everything and have everything. To have nothing already and to lose your wife. Like, he kept trying to say, like, he lost his wife and we weren't there for the past three years. We ain't, we've never, we don't care about her. And blah. He tried to paint that type of picture to us. But you can't paint that type of picture when we don't even know who you are. But you can say all this shit about us. But you look at what you thought these people were fake people in these pictures? Man, ever since we've gotten back from Jersey, because we had to leave, we got to get back to life. We got to get back to life. So we all end up riding with my mother and my aunt Sonia back to the house. Well, back to Jer Georgia. And this nigga just keeps calling and calling and calling, trying to sit down with my dad to plan her funeral. Bro, if you cared about your wife, you would release her body and let us bury her. She bought a plot next to Cat because she wanted to be buried next to Cat. She don't want to be cremated. She don't want to do none of that. She want to be buried next to Cat. You're preventing her from living out her last wishes. But you the husband and you know what's up. He done called my dad's stepson so many times, which is disrespectful. Antagonizing him over and over. 
when we got kicked out, my godmother drove past the house again because, you know, we got people. And he's high-fiving the, the, the neighbor that didn't speak to my dad and was giving us the side eye. High-fiving and hugging him like he helped him. Helped him out. Now, I did know that when we was in the house the, before he got evicted out of it, we looked outside and he did have that guy, the neighbor there with him, I guess, as his witness that he lived there. Shit's fucked up. Fucked up. Have no clue who this man is. This man is just in there living with our memories. He put all the plants back in the house, which I hope you knew where everything went. Because when I tell you, I even put the plant stands in a particular part of the house. Because when I tell you, I was grouping like items together. Yeah. He put all the plants back in the house. And since we've been back in Georgia, he just keeps calling and calling. I just spoke to this man yesterday. Because I told my dad, don't speak to him, ever. Because he's he's calling you to antagonize you. So if he calls you, you, you let me know and I'll call him back. So I talked to him yesterday. This man said to me, I'm just trying to get my wife buried. We were in love. You don't know what love is. He said, I, did I do anything wrong? This is what he's saying to me. Did I do anything wrong? I'm just trying to figure out how. I was like, nigga, you, we've been trying to get my grandmother buried since we were there. Now you keep calling and calling and calling. I'm like, bury your wife. Because so far, everything's your fucking responsibility. We done tried to take this shit off your hands. But you wanted this shit on your hands. Because you, you don't want us to get no autopsy. You don't want us to get this death certificate. You don't want us to really set stuff up. Because once stuff happens, you're out of here, bro. We already told them to come pick up the car, but he keeps the car in the garage or he drives it. How are you driving when you don't have an ID? I end up getting his Kenyan passport number because people feel bad for us. So I got his information. We tried to call We tried to call immigration. Immigration hasn't called us back, but we probably got to get back on that. Um, and we're trying to get the whole, we're trying to get the whole block at this point. Um, we had to do what we had to do when we got back to Georgia. So I don't want to say too much about what we're doing because it's it's a lot. And I got videos and receipts to show y'all, but I'm not going to show y'all now. It'll probably be in the future. So I hope you hope you subscribe, baby, because this is a story to motherfucking tell. And this is going to be a long journey of getting my grandmother buried. So basically, after the conversation I had with him, I'm basically, he kept saying, why we can't handle this as a family? Do y'all hear how crazy that is to even say that? I was like, you ain't no, I told him straight, you ain't no fucking family nigga. Stop playing with us. We don't know you. We don't know you. Stop playing with us. If you loved your wife like you claim you do, she wouldn't still be in this morgue. But you broke. And you don't know what the fuck to do. So at the end of the conversation, I'm like, bury your wife, nigga. Mind you, we done told him over and over and over again. Bury your wife. Handle it. That's your business. That's your problem. I'll never forget when the first set of cops was there. He gonna say at the end of the conversation. At the end of the conversation, I'm not here to talk about the body. My condolences and good night. At this point, I want this nigga's balls to completely detach from his body. That's how much he was like. And it's like we can't turn up the way we. If we was in Georgia, my nigga. If we was in Georgia, my nigga, we would have beat this nigga ass and, and went to jail happy. But since we in a whole other state that we do not live in, that has laws that are completely dumb and disrespectful to the American people. <laughs> uh-uh. No, sir. He was trying to get us to place hands on him. He really was. That's what he was banking on, for my dad to lose it and for everything to go to be in his favor. He was banking on that. But my dad then never did it. So I was proud of him for that. We got to hang with my little sister. Her mother got into a fucking car accident. Her and her mother got into a car accident that led to her mother needing brain surgery during all this shit that's happening. Like, when I tell you it's been rough, October, well, October had to cease for me. It had to stop for me. Life was lifing and I didn't know how to handle it. But her mom's okay now. She's recovering actually really well. But my grandmother's still not buried. And when I ended the call with that man, I said, bury your wife, nigga. Bury your wife. He said, okay, I'll do what I have to do. Mind you, why haven't you already then? Why haven't you already then? So we're realizing this has to be a long game. 
and we have to do what we got to do. I can't tell y'all much, but I was able to tell you that. Ooh, God, that felt great. So that's what I've been going through. And I'm still going through, and my sister's still going through, and my dad's still going through. You see the true colors in people when people pass. It's sad. It's hurtful how evil people are. And it's like the good people don't don't get a break. They don't they get the shit in on the stick all the time. And this is what makes people want to just lose it and lose their mind. Because it's like you do right, you do good, and you help out those that's unfortunate and those same ones take advantage of you. I would never think that my grandmother be going through something like this. Never. I know she is flipping, flopping, turning in that motherfucking morgue. I know Cat is too. Cat's probably like, what in the pure fuck is going on here? Like, this is the... I couldn't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up. So we have to be patient. We have to allow him to do whatever the hell he's going to do. Um, the hospital said they got our back, so they're going to call us. When he's released the body, they told us to stop calling because we were still calling every day. Because niggas forget. Niggas forget. So, especially if this, if it's not their story or their problem, niggas forget. So, I'm probably going to call them when I get off of here. Just because I had a conversation with him yesterday. Like, he tried us so bad while we was there. He called us like, yes, I want to work on getting the body released. Like, yes, I'm going to do it. We rushed to the hospital. Nigga never showed up. Never called him. So he was in, he was literally traumatizing us with my grandmother's body, holding it over our heads. And yeah, so my sister ended up getting the water cut off in the house. I think the power should be cut, power and gas should be cut off. Hopefully they're being cut off because I'm pretty sure I think they, he has to let them in to get that done. And granted, he might not let them in to get that done. Um, we got the computer, so we're trying to go through the computer and see what we can find from there for about the house. And we're probably going to end up selling the house from under him, but I just don't know how that process works. And we're and we've already settled in the fact of losing everything. You know, she had really good stuff in there, and this man who has nothing knows nothing is reaping the benefits of her and Cat's hard work. So I'll keep y'all posted on what happens. But for now, my grandmother is still sitting at the hospital. Waiting to be laid to rest peacefully. So yeah, that's what's been going on, y'all. But I'm kicking myself into high gear and getting myself in order. I can't believe this section of this video is 43 minutes so far and I'm not done talking. So I decided to start November 1st with a fast, a water fast. Um, I've been really not okay eating wise. Um, I haven't touched my hair since being in Jer on Jersey since before being in Jersey. So my hair is shot. I need to get that my hair in order. I need to get back to, I want to sacrifice something in my life so that I can lead to better healing over my grandmother. So I'm like, this is the time for me to really dive back into myself and get myself back in order instead of sitting in this sad space, even though it's very, very sad and it's very traumatizing. And it's very hard on the spirit, hard on the soul, hard on my heart. Like, but this is what, what what I have to go through, what my family has to go through right now until we take the right steps that we got to take to get this handled in the right way. Because we got to go a different route with this one. It's got We got to go a route, route we never thought we'd go. So today is day one of my fast and I'm, you know, I'm going to keep it going. Um, I would love to eat a whole bunch of stuff right now. That's what I've been doing for the past couple weeks. But and I also will have a vlog of my time in Jersey. It was all over the place. Um, I didn't even know if I wanted to vlog while being in Jersey, but I did want to keep track of how I felt and and somewhat of what was going on and how hard it was and how we were up and down in our emotions. One minute we're laughing, one minute we're crying. So I will share that with y'all. But it was really hard to record those moments. But I felt like it was something that I needed to do. So y'all will see that after this video and then after this video, after that video, which will probably be the, I'm going to just make that the end of vlog, why vlogtober ended vlog, you know? But yeah, so we got vlogmas coming up and we're going to see where I'm at at that time. I'm going to definitely vlog every day in December as well. We're going to see how that goes. And November is just about stacking my money and getting back to me and my health and loving on myself and honoring my grandmother 
and just be still getting back into being the best me I can be and stack my money up. Play, I got things to do, things to get to, and my I drastically changed my plan. Like I'm not going to move to Jersey anymore, and because of this, and it's like I have to rethink a lot of stuff that's going on right now in my life. So please like, comment, share the video. Oh Jesus, share the video. Share the video. Protect your elderly people in your life. Check on them. Don't take their word for it. Go see them. Go sit with them for a week. Go really make sure they got their affairs in order, their living will, their power attorney, their after death will. Didn't even know you needed an after death will. Make sure your family members have all their shit in order so nobody can swoop in and take everything your family worked for. Fuck these immigrants, nigga. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Fuck these immigrants. I can't I can't say it enough. Like the video. Share the video. Comment if you've ever known any anybody that went through any experience like this. Cause I would have never thought. Never thought. But I'll see y'all on the next one. Prayers up for my grandmother. I love you, Mama. Rest in peace. You will be laying rest laying you will. Be resting peacefully really soon. Love you. And I love y'all. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.